Thank you very much. I hope everybody can hear me well. Let's get this thing going. Spiders gotta love them. Whoops, let me see here. Usually the first click does not want to work. There we go. Something to consider. I want you guys, if you want, take a snapshot of this. The key to controlling any pest is knowing all you can about that pest. The more you know about that pest, the more successful you'll be. And knowing the idea of that pest uh, actually gives you a, a straighter shot to coming up with some type of solution because guessing is not good and will often get us in trouble. Knowing their biology and habits will enable you to develop a treatment strategy that will be effective. No pest for no pest, you have to no pest. That's with an S at the end, by the way. I don't know why I didn't have that in there. So anyway, let's move on. I want you to look at this. I put this in here first just to show you that, yeah, the, uh, sometimes spiders can be uh, very scary looking like this uh, trapdoor spider out of Kentucky, but the chances of getting tagged by this spider are really slim. You can actually hold most spiders and they just look at you as another substrate that they crawl over. It's not until you may, uh, you might try to press on it or something like that, or if you get it agitated that it might try to bite you. So this one is scary. It's a big male and you can tell it's a male by these little, uh, uh, by the pedipalps right here, along with these little hooks on the end. That's actually uh, what it uses to transfer the sperm into the female. So anyway, that's what that one is. And of course, this one can be a little scary as well. I call this my Jason spider. These are spiny orb weavers found pretty much throughout the U.S. This is a Florida one. Uh, in other areas, the uh, tips may be red. But if you look at it, you have the eyes, eyebrow, nostrils, mouth, a little scary, but uh, this thing wouldn't hurt you if it tried. Unless you try to squeeze it from left to right in your hand, these will penetrate because they are sharp. So <laughs> now on a lighter note, you can tell that some of these can be rather cute, like this a little lynx spider. This thing was at most less than a, uh, I'm gonna say, maybe five millimeters if that long a tiny thing uh, about a, about an eighth of an inch i'm thinking and uh, i'm surprised i even got the shot but look how cute that thing is couldn't hurt you if it tried and then we have this one right here look at those eyes looking at you uh this is just to kind of uh show you that you know the spiders aren't all bad uh, and we'll be talking about some of the um the venomous ones to the ones that are uh, could uh, cause some issues if bitten by. And here's another thing I wanted to talk to you about how spiders are basically, uh, the fear of spiders is primitive and it's usually taught. Uh, most of us do not uh, come into the world with a fear of spiders and snakes. Uh, it's, a, it's a learned thing from your parents or somebody older than you. Here's an example. This is my wife. She's holding a seven foot, actually seven foot one, the Eastern Indigo snake named Jaws. Now this snake got its name Jaws because it was found one year earlier in a survey up in Georgia. Uh, the snake is federally protected and they have to do a survey and do a count in this uh, area of Georgia. And we were in that survey and uh, this thing is uh, massive and my wife uh, held it she's not afraid of it because she knows that uh, you know these things are usually harmless yeah they may bite you and that's not because they're they're mean it's because they're trying to defend themselves and that goes for spider bites as well and if uh, somebody gets bitten it's usually because uh, it was pressed up against the skin so let's move on so here's some general external anatomy for spiders. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, what is this thing thing? is a flatty spider. Uh, we'll start at the top. We have the abdomen right there. And this is the uh, cephalothorax right in here. We have our eyes. Most spiders have eight eyes, you know, uh, and there are some that have six eyes and we'll be talking about that later. 
And of course you have your legs. So this is the upper part of the spider. Notice uh, uh, that it only has two parts, the abdomen and cephalothorax. Well, uh, most of our insects have three parts. You have the abdomen, uh, the thorax, and then of course the head or whatever. So here we go. Uh, here's uh, looking at it from the front. Remember I said, uh, mentioned the pedipalps earlier. And uh, we have the jaws here and the fangs on this particular spider. Pretty gnarly. You all agree? Yeah, I bet you do. Now let's look at the underbelly. We have the sternum right in here. We have the epigynum. I, I hope I said that right. It's right in here. I'm terrible with, uh, with these Latin names. We have the book lungs, spinnerets here and Sparico here, this is where they breathe from. Okay. Now we're gonna start with medically important spiders that we have here in the US. So uh, these are the ones that could cause problems if, if bitten. So worldwide estimates, we have about 46,000, uh, probably more now since I've, I've written this because research is done every year and there are species out there that have not even been seen or or uh, discovered yet or actually uh, uh, researched now only about 200 species have demonstrated to be of medical concern to us in north america only the widows and the recluse spiders are of um, medical concern so those are the only two you really have to uh, worry about. Now within this group, you know, the widows and, and recluse spiders, there are several. So, um, and we'll be talking about those as we go. Almost all spiders have venom. You wanna uh, consider that. There is a species of spiders uh, out there that do not have venom, but uh, you know, they're, matter of fact, I've only seen them one and that's been so, so many years ago here in Florida. So, the chances of uh, you know uh, getting getting bit by a, a, a venomous spider is is there <laughs> because they all have venom except for one species. One is, interesting fact is spiders are able to control the amount of venom release. So I want you to remember that they they are able to control. So and and this is a learned thing by by insects and also by snakes. Any of them that have venom, uh, they don't want to inject a whole you know, a shot of venom in a in a their prey if it's not required because some things are smaller than others that they feed on, so they have learned to um, to control it. Now some bites could have little to no venom injected at all, so keep that in mind. If a bite does occur, it's important to collect the spider or its remains for positive identification by a competent person. Now, of course, you, you take that spider to the to a hospital or to the doctor and say this thing bit me. It's always going to be around recluse. Of course, that's the way it is. <laughs> Many position, uh, physicians do not have the training to identify the spiders. Uh, and we see this all the time because anytime there's a suspected bite by an insect or an arthropod of some sort, um, they always say it's a spider bite and uh, chances of that so slim. Most sores, blisters, or necrotic lesions that are diagnosed as spider bites without evidence of the spider is most likely due to other conditions. Remember that. We have staph infections. We have spore tracheosis, both of which have been misdiagnosed as spider bites. Now, when I was active here in, in Florida with Florida Pest Control, uh, it, it, I got this stuff all the time. Somebody would come in with with something that looked like a bite and try to get us to ID what bit them. Uh, we see this all the time online. If you belong to any of the uh, 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 Facebook or any any other social media, um, you, you see photographs all the time. What bit me or what bit my son? What bit my daughter? And they see these red bumps and stuff like that. And uh, then they expect you to uh, identify the bite. Nobody can identify the bite, not even the doctor, uh, unless you actually see the culprit and collect it. So, you know, don't try to identify bites. It's, it's impossible. You're just guessing. Uh, the fangs on many spider species are too short 
to readily pierce our skin. Now, what I mean by that is if they were just walking on your, your hand or something like that and stop and try to inject their fang into you, uh, it's not gonna happen. Even the recluse cannot penetrate your skin without being pressed up against your, your skin. So keep that in mind. All right, I think we'll, uh, we'll go over to uh, widow spiders. Uh, what time is it? I didn't even, I, I hope I'm not going too fast here. Uh, maybe uh, if uh, you guys will hop in and let me know if I get close to the end so I don't go over. All right, we have uh, four native species of spiders in the United States, widow spiders that is. There's the Southern Black Widow, which is found in the southeast and even further up north, you know, into uh, Virginia, uh, up in Illinois, and, you know, some of those areas as well. Then we have the northern black widow spider and the western black widow spider. And then down here in Florida, we have a spider that's seldom seen. It took me a few years to even find one, and that's the red widow. And they're found in Sand Hill habitat. Um, here in, in the state of Florida, and you have to look hard to find them. And then, of course, the brown widow, which is an introduced species. It's not a, a native of the United States, but since they have been re uh, since they've been introduced, they're, oh man, they're, they're pretty much throughout the southeast, and I hear they're being found uh, west, you know, into California. So they are definitely spreading. The red or reddish hourglass on the underside of the abdomen is a key identification characteristic. And uh, as I show you some photos of these different type spiders, uh, I'll show you how to identify them uh, by actually looking at the, uh, the uh, hourglass, the red hourglass underneath. Egg sac from the brown widow, uh, they have these small spikes on them, the little orbs that stick out of the surface and the uh, the the, the uh, egg sacs from our other uh, native widows, they're smooth. They're round and smooth without those little orbs. Here is a male black widow. It's uh, you know looks a lot different than the female. You can tell it's the male because it has these uh, pity pops right here. Excuse me. And uh, remember, I told you that this is their how they transfer sperm over to the female so that's your male okay here's a female southern black widow now if you look here at the hourglass you notice that it's a complete hourglass it's full there's no breaks it's not cut off it's you know it is a full size hourglass and um, it's completely red now this orangey area you see here is probably just a, an effect of the light, the flash that I used to take this photo. So that's your southern black widow. And there's the, uh, a photograph of the complete hourglass. And an egg sac here. Uh, notice that it's round. This is a very old photo that I took with film. You know, gosh, probably 20 years ago or more. And the northern black widow, they have this, this stripe on the back of the abdomen pointing to this other one. There's actually sometimes another red dot up here uh, closer to the head. But you notice that they, uh, this red, red spot looks like a heart. Pretty cool. So, and then the underside where the hourglass is, we have the, uh, notice the gap right here it's divided so that's how you tell the difference between the uh the northern and the uh the southern black widow so there you go hope you guys are getting this oh and here's that other dot that i was telling you about this is the line pointing to this one and then there's another one up at top this once again is the northern and you notice the uh round egg sacs here this, these spiders are in Florida, but only in a small area up in the panhandle uh, around this area called uh, Torreya State Park and Gadsden County and all that for you Florida boys. Because I saw a couple of you pop in 
from Florida. And here's your brown widow. The brown widow can be very variable in color. They can be almost as dark as a uh, as a, the black species, but um, most of the time it's kind of brown. And you can see the uh, the light banding on the legs here. And if you look at the hourglass, it is an off red. It's a reddish orange, and it's not a full. You have one area that's full, and then the area that's closest to the head is a three quarter size. It's not. Uh, the the full size uh, that you would see on the uh, southern black widow. These things are, like I said, everywhere. Uh, they're throughout Florida, probably Georgia, uh, Alabama, west through Texas. Um, I've heard of uh, people seeing them in the Carolinas as well, and I've heard reports out of uh, California. So they are getting around, no doubt about it. The hitchhike, uh, I have seen them uh, under bumpers on cars, campers. Uh, they love doing that, you know, building their their gnarly nest uh, around bumpers and underneath things. I've seen them in mailboxes. I've seen them uh, under uh, chairs on patios and stuff like that. So they love to get underneath um, objects to build their their nest. And here's the egg sac. Notice the orbs. There you go. Got all these little spikes sticking out. Uh, you've already seen the uh, the eggs from um, from the uh, other widows, and they were perfectly round. So, and by the way, there's a lot of predators. There's a predatory wasp that seeks out the eggs from widow spiders, and um, should have put a photograph of those the next time, maybe. But um, they, they're parasit parasitized quite a bit. So that's some good biological control right there. Now, here's the uh, red widow that I was telling you about. And it is probably the, the best looking one. There's no doubt about it. It, it is a beautiful spider, nice red. Um, these, like I said, are only found in Florida. And you can see the, the top is usually uh, has, has these red dots on it. And of course, they do have an hourglass. Let me see if I have a, nope, I don't have a photograph of the uh, understructure. I do, but I didn't include it on this. But uh, if you guys ever see one of these, uh, man, that's pretty good. You have to go think, uh, through places like Ocala National Forest and look for them, usually around uh, palmetto bushes and such. All right. The venom from widow spiders are uh, neurotoxic. Um, which affects the nervous system. Uh, if bitten, uh, a victim may feel uh, a painful rigidity in the uh, abdominal area, in your muscles there in your belly, uh, tightness in the chest, increased blood pressure, uh, body temperature will rise, you get some uh, nausea and sweating. Now that, that kind of sounds like a bad flu to me. So, <laughs> but um, the interesting thing is that you, you hear about how deadly they are and well, they can be, if, you know, if it's a, a young uh, human or, you know, a child or somebody that has uh, some immune issues or the elderly that uh, uh, that may be bitten. But there has been no deaths reported since they first started reporting you know, black widow bites. Uh, back in um, 1983, that's when they started uh, actually recording these and have annual reports. So that's that's a good thing. And if you ever hear of somebody telling you that, you know, yeah, they know of somebody that died from a widow bite. Uh, no, it didn't happen. And if it did happen, it wasn't reported, which is probably not going to happen. All right. I think we're digging to the recluses now. Now, as you can see, it's not a large spider. You have a quarter there, and uh, that one happens to be a male, and we'll talk more about that in just a little while. But they're not big, and you know, note the name, recluse, recluse spider. If you know the meaning of recluse, it means that it's not you know, out and about, and it, it likes to hide, it's shy. So very reclusive. Now, there are six native species in the U.S. Excuse me. 
Uh, we have uh, the brown recluse, of course, has the largest range. Um, the other ones are found in desert areas, um, Arizona, uh, Texas, oh, New Mexico, uh, into Southern California and stuff like that. Now, when recluse spiders are found in those areas, it's not going to be the brown. It's going to be the desert recluse or the uh, the uh, Apache. You know, there's some others. And uh, one, uh, there's also a couple of, of recluse spiders that have been re that have been introduced, and that would be the Mediterranean recluse and the Chilean recluse. The Mediterranean recluse is the one that's most often found in areas at the uh, uh, outside of the brown recluse range. For instance, here in Florida, uh, we can find Mediterranean recluse spiders around port areas uh, such as Tampa, Jacksonville, M Miami. Um, they're usually brought in. Now, the, the cool thing about uh, recluse spiders, when they're outside of their normal range, uh, they're going to be very reclusive. They're not going to travel from let's say they were brought into this particular warehouse in some goods. Um, the chance that, that those spiders aren't going to migrate over into another building, you know, 30 feet away. They're going to pretty much stay right there. And, and that's what makes it easy to control them. Once you find them in a building, you can pretty much eradicate them uh, in areas that, that are outside of their uh, natural habitat. Now, the, um, the key identification characteristics pretty close, uh, easy, it's the fiddle. And I'm gonna show you uh, pictures of that. And uh, three pair of eyes. Remember what I said earlier, most spiders have four pair of eyes. Uh, there's just a few spiders that have the uh, six eyes, three pairs. So let me go ahead and dig into that. You can see that real easily in, on this male. You have a, a pair, a pair, a pair, there you go. And you can also see the violin or the fiddle shaped head uh, uh, or, you know, on the on a cethro thorax here. So this is a this one is a male. This is a, a brown recluse. This one came from Kansas. And here's the female a better shot of the uh, of the eyes. Easy, easy to ID these. Um, uh, you know how it goes. You guys probably have customers. If there's a brown spider, it's a recluse. Now, I know we have, uh, what do we have here? Uh, almost 200 participants. Some of you may be from the area of recluse spiders. Uh, there is a map that you can download, and it gives you a general idea of where the brown recluse spiders are located. Now, if uh, you're out of that area and somebody says they saw a recluse spider, the chances are very slim, more, more than likely they saw some other brown spider. Now the, uh, the venom, this is cytotoxic. It's a, it, it affects the cells. It actually will uh, break down you know, blood vessels and, and tissue, um, sort of like the, the bite of a rattlesnake or something. It is. Uh, it can be necrotic, which means that it could cause severe damage. Uh, but that is not the rule. Um, it, it's actually very rare. Uh, most of the time, when uh, uh, somebody is bitten, a lot of times they don't even know it. Uh, sometimes you have a, a red area, uh, and it just goes away after a while. Uh, but uh, it depends on the person. Some people react not too well to recluse bites. So uh, when you see photographs of recluse bites where the, the skin was all you know messed up and eaten up, looks like hamburger, that is uh, a rare occasion. It doesn't happen that way to all people. Uh, yeah, I don't know if, if you guys know this or not, but uh, only one death reported. Um, and in that one, it was highly disputed because they could not find um, the, the spider, uh, and there were no spiders found in that area whatsoever, as far as recluse spiders were concerned. Um, they think more than likely it was a secondary infection that took this man out. I, I believe that was here in Florida. He was cleaning his garage and something tagged him on the back of the neck. Um, most likely he died of staff, and uh, that's something I would have to look into and see if there's any new news on that. 
So here are some facts about some other spider bites in general. Many believe that spiders are quite common, which is uh, spider bites, that is, uh, which is simply not true. And they have no interest in, in any interest in us at all. Uh, we are not a food source. They feed on insects and other invertebrates, and they do not suck blood. So the chances of a spider just crawling down and biting a human for whatever reason is uh, just, you know, not, not the way it works. Uh, they are just very rare to get a spider bite, but yet you hear it all the time from our doctors and, and people, of course, people out there will say, yeah, my brother's sister's cousin got bit. And then if you try to tell them that, you know, did you find the spider? Uh, of course, what they do is they're going to argue till, you know, <laughs> they, they don't like to be, uh, you know, told different. There are many insects that do bite humans and we have the mosquitoes fleas ticks bed bugs and so on and so on but uh, uh you know that's this normal these are known blood feeders and i had this fellow that i worked with years ago who got bit on the inner thigh he got bitten on the inner thigh by a uh, a flea he felt it actually and the flea was there and he ended up getting a staph infection from that flea bite and actually uh, spent uh, several weeks in the hospital. And he's got this little crater there now where uh, the, uh, the skin had reacted and was eaten away by the staph infection. So I'm sure that some of you have heard uh, about uh, people getting uh, uh, you know, bitten at nighttime. Uh, you've probably heard some of the myths about spiders being swallowed during the night. Uh, up to you know 800 spiders a night or some ridiculous number like that now if there's spiders being eaten every night accidentally by humans there's other issues there <laughs> i'm talking about insects because if there's a bunch of spiders in the house they're not feeding on each other i can tell you that well some do but most of the time there's pests and that's part of the control right there is if you control uh, the insect, you know, arthropod infestation inside structures, you control the spiders too, because there's nothing there for them to eat. All right, let's talk about other spider species. Over 3,800 species in North America, and only about 30 species are known to be. Uh, it's synanthropic, and that means uh, lives in association with humans. So, hope you got that. Remember that one. Out of that 30 or so, many are of exotic origin, meaning non-native. There's a lot of spiders that we see in and around our house that don't even belong there because they came from someplace else, non-native. And that makes up uh, quite a few of the ones that we see around our structures. Here's a, an example of one you'll see around a structure. It's called a spitting spider. And if you look at it, Closely, you see one, two, three, that's three pairs of eyes. It is closely related to the uh, recluse spider, but it, it doesn't have the same venom. Uh, and it actually spits out a, um, a, a sticky substance that it keeps up here in the cethral, uh, thorax, cethral thorax here. Uh, and it, it, it'll actually spit it out and entangle whatever prey is there so it's pretty cool here's the same spider you can see the size of the head area here and this is where all that goop is uh, being stored and manufactured and we look here they have all their egg sac she's carrying around her egg sac it looks like a sack with a bunch of little ping pong balls in it so that is a spitting spider uh, here's a, a, a photograph I shot it was by accident I have these around my house. They're on around the outside. And uh, one day, one night, actually, I had my headlamp on and I'm taking photographs of this spider. And um, sometimes it looks like a fruit fly flew in towards the light, like a lot of insects do. And this spider spit it, grabbed it, and pulled it to it. You can see the line right here where the spider was uh, actually trapped to start with and pulled to feed on. So that's a, a pretty good demonstration on what spitting spiders do. It's, they spit and capture the... <laughs> I even jumped. 
<laughs> oh, good. I hope I scared a bunch of people. I jumped. I forgot it was there. <laughs> oh, I need to calm down. <laughs> All right, we have the red house spider here. Uh, you notice that it looks like a, a widow spider. Now, this spider um, is introduced. It's not a native, but now they're everywhere in the U.S. This is the spider that you see making a small web in a corner of a window seal. Uh, if you move furniture away, uh, you notice that there's webbing around the feet, uh, you know, un underneath the couch and stuff like that. And it's usually this spider right here. Once they get established in a house, uh, they, they, they'll actually go in areas where uh, you don't even know they're there, like underneath couches and, and furniture and beds. And the reason why they're, they, they live so well is because you have smaller insects that you don't see. I'm talking uh, insects like uh, springtail and, and sosids and stuff like that that are pretty much in every house. And the reason why you don't see them because they, they're going to be in areas of where humidity is a little higher and you have uh, growth of, um, of uh, mold and stuff like that that you don't see. So there's plenty of food for these red house spiders to feed on. So if you really want to control uh, those tiny insects, you want to make sure that your homeowner has got the uh, humidity down. If the hum humidity stays well above 55%, you know, 60, 70 uh, percent, you're going to have these little sausages crawling around and these little uh, 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 springtail inside the house, and you won't even know it because they're going to be in the pockets where the hum humidity is uh, uh, suitable for them. And that's where these spiders are going to be. Here's another photograph of the red house spider. Uh, these are harmless, you know, they, even if it could bite you, it wouldn't make a difference anyway. You wouldn't even, probably wouldn't even feel it. And then we have the southern crevice spider. This is a, uh, a spider that's pretty well widespread throughout the U.S. Um, their webbing is a pretty gnarly web and with a hole in the middle. And these spiders will actually uh, stay in this hole until something comes out and then they'll run out and grab it and feed on it. And this is a female here. Now, look at this one. That one is the spider that most people say I have recluse spiders. Well, first of all, this spider is going to be up on a wall, up in a corner, uh, stuff like that, while a recluse spider is always going to be low uh, along the baseboards underneath the baseboard. Remember what I said earlier, they're reclusive. They're not going to be out crawling around uh, on an open wall or outside wall, except for at night. The recluse will come out and crawl around at night. But uh, during the daytime, no, these guys can be seen in the daytime as well. There's another photo of the male. Notice the pedipulps, how long it is. It's folded under. Here's a joint. If it was to unfold its pedipulps, it would be probably uh, this long where my uh, uh, where you can see my my cursor interesting spider these spiders the all this all, every one of these photos that I've showed you were right here this actually I found on my bathroom wall so there you go here's a little video let's go ahead and look at that Um, that spider was actually uh, in a mobile home that uh, was infested with these crevice spiders. The, the mobile home, the, the, the lady that lived there it was wheelchair bound. And what we did, we went in there with uh, HEPA vacuum cleaners and sucked up all the uh, spiders we could find around the interior, cleaned up everything. Uh, we couldn't use any pesticides whatsoever. So this was all mechanical uh, uh, control. So uh, sometimes you have to do that because not every house you're able to go in and, um, and, and apply products. So, all right, you may have seen a rather large spider running on the wall, you know, uh, down here in the southeast, 
um, you know, these spiders are actually outside. Now, what we're going to talk about is the giant crab spider. It's also known as a huntsman spider uh, or housekeeping spider. This spider is big. Now, the further north you get, chances of seeing them outside are slim because they don't like the cold. So they actually do stay inside houses up in the attic in the house itself. Further south, we can find them outside uh, in nature and plus inside the house. And that's this big old uh, boy right here. This is the uh, uh, crab spider, giant crab spider huntsman. Uh, this one is, was actually in my office. Well, not my office, but the office across from, from me. Uh, our, uh, our entomologist at the time was uh, Stephanie. And uh, I was in there talking to her and this thing ran up the wall from behind her, uh, her bookcase. And <laughs> so I ran and grabbed my camera real quick and, uh, and caught it. These things are amazing. Uh, they, they love feeding on large American cockroaches and brown, uh, you know, uh, uh, cockroaches and whatever, you know, roach they can find. So if, if they're in a house and they're active, then they do have a food source. Here's one. And this is another male. I was uh, in an area called Rodman, Rodman Dam on the rocks and by the lake. I was photographing this one and it finally jumped out of my, uh, my view. And I looked down and it had jumped out and my headlamp was, drew in this June bug and it ran out and grabbed it. Notice how the elytra of this, of this June bug has been lifted this spider knew that it would have a hard time going through the elytra so when it grabbed it it lifted on this particular one so spiders are pretty smart now this one here it says my internet is unstable oh my so anyway this one here uh will uh you know probably uh, penetrate your skin if it uh, if you press it up against you. This is another common one. It's called a yellow garden orb weaver. This is uh, throughout the southeast, and then there's there's other uh, uh, species of this in the same genus uh, in other parts of the state, uh, the states, I should say. And we have a, a spotted orb weaver. These are just some spiders that you'll see in nature. Um, and uh, we have the marbled orb weaver. This is found uh, north of Florida. Uh, many of you have probably seen this spider in several areas up north. Uh, I know I, this, I think this one came from uh, Tennessee. I took this one night in Tennessee. And then we have the orchard spider. I'm just going through some spiders that you may see around houses that uh, are doing you know, good pest control for you. Um, a lot of people don't even want to see a spider, but sometimes education is the key. You, 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 you talk to your customer and explain to them that when there's a spider, you know, away from the house, they're doing uh, pest control work and they should appreciate that. Uh, this is a ghost or sack spiders. This one actually is a, um, a, a ghost spider here. Beautiful little spider. These uh, ghosts and, and sack spiders actually love to hang around vehicles. You know, you may uh, go out to your vehicle and all of a sudden you see a spider on your a dash or uh, crawling around on the, on the window. Uh, I don't know what it is about these things, but they love uh, vehicles. And here's one. This was actually on my camper. Uh, this one is a big male. And, you know, they have a bad rap, too. They say that the venom in these uh, will cause, you know, necrosis. But it's not true. Um, these, uh, like any spider, will bite you, and it's just a bite unless your body reacts poorly and you end up with an infection, and it's usually a secondary infection of some sort and not actually the venom that caused it. Here's another one. It's just a good-looking spider that you see in and around houses. And we have our jumping spiders that you'll see often. You know, these, these are cute little things. Uh, you, you find these around your windowsill a lot. Uh, with the uh, air conditioner on the inside and, um, you know, heat on the outside, you have uh, air currents right there. And air currents around houses will actually bring a house flight close to the house. 
And of course, the odors from the house cooking and stuff like that will bring house flies too. These things will hang around your windowsill waiting for a house fly to uh, get close enough uh, where it can jump on it. And you can tell by looking at the eyes on this thing that uh, they can see very well and they rarely miss. And if they do miss, miss they're tethered and uh, they'll climb up their web and go right back you know, to where they were. And there's a better photograph of the of the eyes right there. Cool looking jumping spiders. I know you've all seen them. This this one was taken in Missouri, and I don't recall the common name of this one, but these are just spiders that you'll see in and around homes. Uh, wolf spiders, extremely common. This was uh, from the Sand Hill areas. These do not make webs, uh, you know, for catching prey. They will put webs around their uh, their home, you know, where they where they uh, would rest, you know, during the daytime. Uh, these are, uh, are runners. They catch their prey, uh, and um, most of them are out at nighttime. If you get your flashlight and put it on your head like this, or use a headlamp and look across your lawn you see a lot of shiny glittery things that look like water droplets. Now, if you go to one of them, just follow it down there. It's usually a wolf spider out in the yard. If, if I do that in my yard, there's hundreds of them. There's wolf spiders all over my property here, which is a good thing. And there is a close up shot of a wolf spider. These are the um, uh, uh, four pair of eyes is what I'm trying to say. Now, one way you can ID a lot of spiders is by uh, by the eye pattern. The wolf spider eye pattern is unique, um, just like every other spider. BASF, I, I hate to mention them here, but they have a great book showing uh, eye patterns of different pest spiders. So, and there's how a wolf spider will carry her egg sac. This is what she does before she finally decides to uh, let it hatch. And once it hatches, it'll be all over her back. This is a rabid wolf spider, and that's, that's the common name. And you can see all the baby wolf spiders here on its back. Here, there's a better photograph of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Little baby wolf spiders. Now, I have uh, seen these before. I'm trying to take a photograph of it and I get too close or I accidentally bump it. And all of a sudden the spiders all fall off and they run everywhere. Some of them try to get back on mama, but uh, it's, it's a mess. And I'm, I'm talking hundreds of spiders. It's just whoop, crawling everywhere, freak people out. Then we have our fishing spiders that are sometimes found on trees in people's yard. Most of them are pretty close to water, but some of them will you know travel away from water if they find a suitable spot uh, because they're going to feed on other things they they not only feed on tadpoles and fish but they'll uh, feed on other arthropods as well okay let's look at this video right here this is a Yeah, that was the same house that we were uh, cleaning up the inside for the uh, southern house spider, the crevice spider. These uh, fishing spiders were all around the outside as, as well as some other spiders as well. Uh, that, that house was uh, a spider haven. I mean, we, I found all kinds of species there. Now, a little bit of spider control. Inspection, of, of course, is your first and uh, uh, you want to do the best inspection you possibly can. You want to look because not only will you uh, find the spiders, but you may find some other things that you need to control. Identification, I'm a stickler for this. Positive ID is a must, you know, when it comes to a uh, medical concern, when it comes to spiders, especially if somebody says they were bitten by a spider. Identification is the key. Sanitation. I'm going to read this out inside clutter, such as boxes, paper, clothing, uh, things such as that should be discouraged. 
outside debris, you know, lumber piles, firewood, stones or bricks, landscape timbers, uh, move that away from the structure. Uh, th that will discourage, you know, the spiders from being uh, moving into the house. And uh, your shrubbery and your grass should be, you know, trimmed away from the house. The grass should be cut at the recommended uh, height and things such as this. All of this will go a long way in controlling spiders. And of course, uh, cobweb dusting uh, uh, to remove spider webs. I, I saw an article somewhere on pest, not an article, but a post on Pest Cemetery recently about a guy that doesn't use a duster. And that's fine if he doesn't want to. Maybe he doesn't have the, uh, the spider uh, you know, problem that's, that some other people have, but using a cobweb duster will go a long way as well. And then get your, your control product up in the eaves uh, in the where your fascia is and where your soffit meets the wall, force your product in there because the spider will back up and get down and get that on the body and eventually they will die from the product. Why are spiders so difficult to control uh, with um, with the products that we have out there? Well, you know, they don't groom themselves in the same manner as other uh, insects do, but they do groom and if you get your product where it needs to be, they will come in contact with it. Uh, of course, uh, over the body, you know, topical applications are very good, but you want to use a product um, such as I am that will have uh, a good residual and you can apply it in areas that you know the spiders are going to be. Uh, so pretty much that's it as far as control. Now let's talk about a couple things that uh, you know that aren't real spiders. This is actually called a harvestman, and if you notice, it is one single body, and it has two, uh, just a pair of eyes here. Uh, it has kind of like fangs, but there's no venom. Excuse me, in these things whatsoever. You may have heard at one time that the harvestman spiders are have the worst venom of any type spider-looking thing. And there's actually no venom at all. These things are opportunists. They, they'll feed on a dead insect. They'll feed on uh, a, a frog that's been killed in the road if they find it. Uh, they're very good opportunists. Here's another picture. There's this uh, pair of eyes right there and one body. It's, it's all connected. It's uh, probably more related to a crab uh, than an uh, a, a actual spider. All right, I think I'm at the end. This should give uh, plenty of time to uh, do the, uh, uh, the test. And uh, I'm going to end it with this video here. And that's it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much for this great presentation on spiders and why we have to love them. Uh, thank you for having great me. Job, I enjoy Daniel. it. Thanks, guys.